is ESPN College Football Insider and expert, longtime friend of the program, Trevor Maddich, back for another Maddich Monday following a huge win for BYU over Baylor. Trevor, what was the best part of your weekend overall? It was the entire day. I mean, it was a great slate of games. It was a, a lot of excitement, massive upsets. Alabama almost went down to Texas. And then to cap it off with that late game, BYU takes Baylor into double overtime and pays it off with an emotional victory. I mean, from start to finish, it was a great day of college football. Our question of the day is, what's the best thing you saw in the game? Resilience. Baylor thought that they could beat BYU into submission. I mean, they ran the ball 52 times, average less than three yards per carry, but 52 times, thinking that eventually they would break the Cougars' will. The Baylor defense was incredibly aggressive and physical as well, thinking they could break the Cougars' will. But for every punch that the Bears threw, the Cougars threw a punch right back, and they took them to the very end. And neither team had a broken will. But both teams were just incredibly brutally physical. And I would throw into that mix the almost physical nature of the crowd. I mean, the rock to, to provoke two false start penalties on Baylor's last failed series in double overtime, they get a big part of the credit as well. This was just a, a resilient, physical, brutal victory. We're with ESPN's Trevor Maddich on BYU Sports Nation. Trevor, when you look at individual performances, which individuals jumped off the screen to you from BYU? Well, Chase Roberts came out of nowhere, didn't he? And I tell you, you've got to go with Jaron Hall as well, getting him the ball. But that first touchdown that he scored on the left side of the end zone, that toe tap to score, I mean, that was, I mean, my eyes got as big as saucers on that one because that showed a capability that we weren't sure BYU was going to have in this game without their top two receivers. Uh, so Jaron Hall and the receivers, but especially Chase. And then defensively, for goodness sake, Every time I saw a massive hit, it seemed, from the BYU defense, I looked up and it was Max Tooley. So I just kept looking up and it's Max Tooley again. And then finally I would see big, massive hits. I wouldn't even look up. I would just think, oh, well, gee, it's got to be Max Tooley. And sure enough, often it was. Max Tooley wore a cape in this game. And I hope they have a, an ice bath and a massage therapist for him all week long because he earned every bit of it. Seriously, he was incredible. Uh, more big hits. Had the big, uh, pick six last week. Now this week, you mentioned that the defense just showed up in a real way. And if you had said that BYU was going to rush for 83 yards, I would have said, BYU's losing this game and probably handily. But no, the defense only gave up 289 yards, 20 points. Didn't have a takeaway, but BYU didn't give it away either. This was, this was a physical contest, Trevor, one that you probably would have enjoyed playing in, I imagine. Yeah, it was physical, and it was old school from that standpoint. But the defense also got pressure on the quarterback. Now, sometimes it was a linebacker blitzing, but the defensive line was relentless in their effort. And they got a lot of, of pressure on the quarterback because of that effort. And you've got to credit the back end for that. I mean, the secondary had a lot of pressure on them. Because you figure that the Baylor offense was going to pound the ball, and BYU would have to come up to stop the run first and put a lot of pressure on the secondary to cover. The secondary covered exceptionally well, and that gave the defensive line time to pressure that quarterback. And so all the, the defensive components came together in a synergy that was just phenomenal. And in doing it, they were brutal with their physicality. And so it was a, it was a great dance by the BYU defense of so physical up front and so skilled in the back end. Trevor, we discussed earlier in the show today, no Puka Nakua, no Gunnar Romney. Tyler Batty sat out the second half for BYU on that defensive line, and still the Cougars found a way to win. Now, I'm not sure where it's going to help BYU the most that they had to dig deep in a scenario like that and test the depth so early, but frankly, I feel like it will matter at some point for BYU. Why do you feel like that type of win was so critical for BYU moving forward? Well, it validated the work of the rotation. I mean, last year, the Baylor game, BYU was just out of people. And Baylor just hammered them. And this year, Batty went out. But for the most part, they were healthy up in that front seven. And they were able to keep pounding away with guys that last year had to play more than they expected to play. And that is something that 
from a game day standpoint is important lessons, but from a preparation standpoint, it's important as well. Because if you know you're gonna be in there, you prepare with a little bit different focus. And so the depth of BYU that Kalani Satake and his staff have built is starting to really show up against these power five teams. Normally you'd have really good starters and a big drop off in most positions from starter to backup. But now, not only do they have good rotations, they have competition in practice. That gets the best out of everybody because because you can lose your job if you've got a backup that's almost as good as you. And BYU is developing that kind of a roster, and it's starting to show. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Okay, tell me about what a top 10 win does for a team. Because you played in 1984 as a senior on that team that beat number three Pitt. You'd lost Steve Young and other weapons, right? Gordon Hudson, notably. Yet, you guys win that game. What does a win like this do for a team like BYU now who's flying up the poles? You know, it seems like this gigantic mountain that you don't dare look beyond. And really, truthfully, the, the team can't look beyond it. The team has to look at the next opponent. That's it. But we, as we're looking at it from the outside in, it's like this giant mountain that who knows if they could get, get over it. And even that national championship year with Pitt, well, the entire offseason, we looked at that roster. We, you know, you've got Outland candidates, Heisman candidates, future first-round draft choices, all Americans. And we're looking at that going, you know, that we think we can go up there and compete with those guys. But nobody dared think, yeah, we're just going to go up and win that game. You know, we knew we had to fight hard to have a chance. Well, we won that game, but on the plane back, the thinking started to change. It was like, you know what? <laughs> we're good. We, we have a chance. Now, we stayed focused on each consecutive opponent. We, as a team, never looked at the schedule and, and said, that's a win, that's a win, that's a win. But a win like this, for us back then, for this, a top 10 win for these Cougars, is the kind of thing that you can just take a breath and say, you know what? If we keep doing the right things every day, if we stay humble and respect every part of our, our game and our opponent's game, we're really good. We can do stuff. It's a Mattis Monday on BYU Sports Nation. The Cougars make a nine-spot jump from 21 to 12. Now, allow me, if you will, a little bit to rewind, Trevor, and point out that we've all kind of felt like BYU has been underranked uh, and for much of the preseason and through the first week. Now are they where they belong? Is number 12 where BYU belongs, or do the Cougars deserve to be a couple of spots higher? Well, everything's relative, right? There might be some years where 12 is way too low. Some years where 12 is kind of high. I think right now the way that they're playing, if they if they get Batty back, if they get their top two receivers back, if their tight end room gets healthy, then this team should be ranked in the top 10. Because right now, you look at, at the top of college football, and there, there's one completely dominant team, and that's Georgia. There's a couple of them that look like they're going to be dominant, and that's Alabama and Ohio State. And then there's a handful of teams that have excellent things going for them, but that have questions that still need to be answered. And I think you can put BYU in that big jumble in the top 10 and be fair. Well, the world revolves around Florida because uh, Flo Florida beats Utah, skyrockets. Kentucky beats Florida, skyrockets to nine. So I think BYU just needs to schedule Florida. But I do want to ask about Oregon. Huh. It's hard to know whether... They're going to put that on the bulletin board. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's hard to know how good Oregon is because obviously smacked 49-3 to Georgia. Then they beat up Eastern Washington. There's kind of the low and the high in terms of points uh, per game in both those games. So what's your assessment of Oregon? Because certainly the Ducks are good. It's just hard to know how good. Oregon is really good, and they have the potential to be a top-10 team. I think BYU fans will have seen that Georgia game and think that, that Oregon got obliterated. They're not that good. Well, Georgia is that good. And this, this Oregon team is solid in a lot of the ways that BYU is. I mean, Oregon has one of the best offensive lines in all of college football. Their combination defensive line and linebackers, one of the best in all of college football. It didn't show up against Georgia because Georgia is apparently on another level again. But still, this is a solid physical team. I think that you've got to look at the, the quarterback for Oregon as really the linchpin. And against Georgia, Bo Nix, he didn't have the game he wanted to have. Against Eastern Washington, Bo Nix was brilliant. And if that Bo Nix shows up against BYU, then the Cougars are going to be in for a long day. So I think Cougar fans they need to understand that even though BYU beat top 10 Baylor, this Oregon team has, is just as physical as Baylor. And I think they've got more skill 
in the skill positions than Baylor. So th this is another tough out for the Cougars. It's been hard to beat the first two weeks of college football, Trevor. We hope that week three is just as rewarding as a fan. We thank you for the time, as always, for bringing it on Manage Monday. You know what? It's great to be here, and, uh, and when I get there, I want my uh, case of Cougar tails. You Done. got it. Done, my you friend. Thanks, Trevor. <laughs> I mean, they, 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 the Cougar Tales were the big stars of the game yeah, on the yeah. broadcast, for goodness sake. So, <laughs> so we're there. Anyway, thanks, guys, for having me on. Go Cougars. You got it. We thank RG.